Giving your drivers feedback without them ever having to look away from the robot is a massive competitive advantage in FTC. Rumble feature that's built into your gamepads is one of the simplest ways to do this, but so many teams ignore it. And it's a great way for your drivers to feel exactly when the in-game starts or to know the instance a mechanism has completed its action, all while staying completely focused on the match. I'm Coach Pratt, and for over a decade I've taught robotics. I've coached FTC teams to national championships, Inspire real wins, and I've seen firsthand how small, smart details like this really help to create a winning team. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to program the gamepad rumble feature in Java. We'll start with some basic commands, and then I'll walk you through a couple practical examples that you can drop right into your own code. Simple end game timer and some tactile notifications for your drivers. So if your controller supports the rumble feature, you can go ahead and follow this. Now keep in mind the Logitech G310 does not support rumble. So you have to use a controller that does support that. So let's go ahead and uh, inside our team code folder, we're gonna go ahead and make a new class. We're gonna call this one the Rumble Test. The Rumble Test is gonna be extends the op mode. And inside of our op mode, we always need two methods. Of course, we need the public void in, in it, and we need the public void start. Oops, sorry, not start public void loop my mistake now to start off we're just going to talk about the basic features you can do might not seem very useful but in the end we'll talk about making a timer for endgame so the easiest one for this is just to simply make it rumble and you can make it rumble for a specific amount of time so what i can do is i'm going to say if gamepad.a that means if you press the game if you press the a button do gamepad one dot rumble, and then you can just put in a duration in milliseconds for how long you'd like that to rumble for. Alternatively, instead of rumble, you can also have rumble blips, which will go like a bzz, 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 and then you can say how many blips you'd like to do. Now, the problem with this one right now is that when you press the A button, if you're going to run this, you're actually going to find it's going to more than just three blips because it's not going to keep track of whether it's actually started and it's going to restart over its own pattern so you need to have some way of verifying that same pattern is not going to show up if you're going to do that so you probably need some sort of boolean to keep track of that so up at the top of our code here we can make a new boolean called was a and the so what we can do now is at the end of our loop we're simply going to read our gamepad actually we'll make two new booleans we'll say was a and then is a. And we'll assign is a to the value of gamepad1.a. And we'll have to say if is a and not was a. And at the end of our loop, we're going to set was a to the value of is a. So we'll check is the a currently pressed, either true or false. Then if the value of is a, or if the value of is a is true and was a is no longer true, which means it wasn't pressed, we should be able to run that blip. So that means when you hold it down, this will only ever trigger once. So you have to use some sort of Boolean logic to keep track of what you're going to do those blips. Otherwise, if you're expecting a certain number of counts, you're actually going to overlap that. And if you really want to, you can actually set different amounts of rumble. So I could say gamepad1.rumble. And after dot rumble, it can take three optional arguments. You could say for the left joystick, I want to add one rumble. For the right joystick, I want to have no rumble and have that for 100 milliseconds. And it'll accept a value between 0 and 1.0. Now, a really common way of using the rumble feature might be to, one, let your driver know when a specific implement has been picked up. So if you have actually managed to collect a piece into your intake you could run the rumble off when a sensor runs through there that's a really visual not only can you visually you can give haptic feedback to your driver another one is you can let your driver know when it is time for end game so let's go ahead and let's make a quick timer for our end game so we're going to remove that and we're going to go ahead and move that and we'll make a new double and we'll call this one end game start for when the end game needs to start. I'll make a new boolean called is and 
game. So we know that we're currently inside of end game. And we're going to make a new variable here inside this start. We're going to sign our end game point. So whenever the driver presses the play button or start. So we're going to do a public void start. And inside of this one, what we're going to do is we are going to make our end game 90 seconds after the time that, that start is put at. So we're going to say the end game start is equal to our get runtime plus 90 seconds. I cannot type 90 to save my life. Then inside of our void loop, this is going to be our end game check. Then we're going to say if our end game start is greater than or equal to our get runtime. Uh, and we are not in is end game means we're not presently in our end game point. We're going to say gamepad one dot rumble. I'm going to rumble with three blips to let our driver know. And then we're going to set is end game is going to be equal to true. So now you've got a really quick timer to let your driver know, hey, you're in those last 30 seconds, because as we all know, sometimes having that sound in the back you don't really keep track of because you're so focused on there that having some haptic feedback and some visual, perhaps a light indicator on your robot and some haptic feedback will really let your driver know that it is time for end game. So I hope you found that quick tutorial on rumble effects useful for you and maybe that end game timer is something you might want to use. If you want to do a little more further learning, I've got a full playlist down below on more Java for FTC tutorials. If you want to get even further deeper into the weeds, uh, Alan Smith has a great book on Learn Java for FTC. That's where a lot of these exercises came from today. I've included that in the link down below. If something's still not clear to you, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to try to help you out with that. Otherwise, best of luck out there this season.